Hello, friends, family, and fans, and welcome to Cinemation, a brand new series where I give spoiler-free reviews on American animated movies that release throughout the year. Today I am going to be reviewing the first theatrical animated movie of 2023, and that is the Super Mario Bros. movie, which released on April 5th. This was easily one of the most anticipated movies of the year, not just because it had Mario in it, but because of everything building up to it. However, not every journey starts out strongly. When this movie was announced back in late 2017, fans were pretty mixed about it. On one hand, the movie was said to be animated, which was fitting for the franchise, especially when you consider the cartoony nature of most Mario games. That also meant that we wouldn't have the same mistake that was made 30 years ago, if you know what I mean. Monkey. However, on the other hand, Nintendo was said to be partnering up with Illumination for this movie, a studio that was very popular among audiences, but not so well received by critics, due to most of their movies either being too simple for their own good, or so poorly written that you wonder what the writers were even smoking. Being that most Mario games follow a very simple structure, you'd expect Illumination to take simplicity to the next level. The movie's reputation only got worse when it was announced that Aaron Horvath and Michael Jelenic, creators of Teen Titans Go, another piece of media that doesn't have the best reputation, would be working on this movie. Then the world practically lost it when the casting was announced, and that pretty much made everyone confirm that Illumination would make another screw-up of a film. However, the events over the past several months have turned people's expectations upside down, as the movie trailers, merchandise, interviews, and more have pretty much given everyone hope that we would have the next best video game adaptation, and Illumination would finally redeem themselves and make a high-quality masterpiece. Plus, directors Aaron Harvath and Michael Jelenic said that they wanted to make the movie as faithful to the games as possible, unlike what Teen Titans Go is to its source material. Being how much of a huge Mario fan I am myself, I was really excited for this movie as well, as it looked promising in terms of plot, voice acting, and visuals. And now it's finally time to see if this movie is everything my heart desires. Without further ado, let's press start. If you have ever played a Mario game before, you would think you would know the plot of this movie right off the bat. However, it does throw a few twists at you. A pair of brothers named Mario, voiced by Chris Pratt, and Luigi, voiced by Charlie Day, quit their construction job run by their former spiky boss, and decide to start their own plumbing business to fix Brooklyn's pipe problems. One day, they travel into an underground sewage area where they get sucked into a magical war pipe where they not only get separated from their home, but from each other as well. Mario ends up in a mysterious land called the Mushroom Kingdom, while Luigi ends up in the dreaded Darklands and is captured by Bowser, an evil monster voiced by Jack Black, who has stolen the legendary Power Star and is plotting to take over the world using its power, starting with the Mushroom Kingdom. In order to save his brother and the Mushroom Kingdom, Mario follows an energetic mushroom person named Toad, voiced by Keegan-Michael Key, to enlist help from the ruler of the Mushroom Kingdom, Princess Peach, voiced by Anya Taylor-Joy, in order to train and get stronger so he can take on Bowser and save Luigi along with the rest of the world. Right off the bat, any old-school Mario fan can tell that the plot of this movie is somewhat of a retelling of the original Super Mario Bros. origin story, where Mario travels to the Mushroom Kingdom in order to save Princess Peach and fight Bowser, while also having Luigi by his side, except in this version we learn more about where Mario was born and originated from, and in this take on the story, he must rescue Luigi while having Peach by his side. I am glad to see that this movie decides to go with that route for Princess Peach, because we get to see her true personality shine, just like in a Mario RPG or any other game where she doesn't get the role as quote-unquote damsel in distress. In this movie, she is free-spirited, strong, and independent, and has a character trait where if you hurt any of her loved ones, you will end up praying for mercy. We also get to see her develop a great friendship with Mario, 
Mario and even display her softer slash mellow side when she sympathizes with him about being separated from his brother. Speaking of Mario, I really like the character arc he goes through in this movie as he tries his best to become a somebody and will stop at nothing to protect those he loves. Even if that means taking some harsh beatings, it always feels well deserved to see him come through with the challenges he faces throughout the course of the film. I also love how the chemistry he has with other characters is handled, especially his brother Luigi. Their brotherly relationship feels incredibly wholesome as they both do their best to help each other out in precarious situations, and it really shows how much they both mean to each other. There is even this one scene when they are separated on Luigi's perspective that made me feel a little emotional, which I did not expect to feel going into a Mario movie of all things. I also think the bond he forms with Peach is sweet as they have this little friendly teasy vibe to their relationship, and the scenes where they sympathize with each other about their troubles is pretty wholesome as well. His relationship with Donkey Kong was also really funny as well, as they have this sort of friendly rivalry like Sonic and Knuckles do in the Sonic the Hedgehog series, and I found their moments to be pretty hilarious, especially the fight between them in the Coliseum. I also want to applaud this movie for creating new characters in the franchise, such as this King Penguin, Unique Kong Designs, a Blue Shell Koopa Paratroopa, and some other ones that I was fascinated by as well. What longtime Mario fans will also appreciate is the amount of love for Donkey Kong that is shown in this movie, especially if you think about the roots for the franchise with the very first game titled Donkey Kong, which was not only a key to making the franchise what it is today, but Mario and Donkey Kong's relationship somewhat reflects their relationship in that game a little bit, so it was a nice detail as well. While we are on this topic, let's talk about the fan service, because it is great in this movie. Not only are a lot of the references you would find in the background of a lot of scenes really charming, but elements like power-ups and Mario Kart are used in new ways that you would probably never see in a normal Mario game, such as Donkey Kong using power-ups, meaning we got to see new cool designs with the character, and the go-karts being used as a method to fight Bowser's army in a really fun scene that took me by surprise in a lot of ways. Not only were these factors nice details, but they really made me appreciate how much the writers care about not only the movie, but Mario in general. However, all that glitters is not gold as this movie has one big flaw that unfortunately makes it far from perfect, and that is the pacing. Yes, the references having purpose is great, and the story is pretty darn good for a Mario movie, but the biggest issue this movie has is that everything feels like it happens too fast. Now, I don't want to go into too much detail in order to avoid spoilers, but in a lot of scenes you don't have time to get fully invested because they feel like they are over so quick without even giving you time to fully digest what is happening. There were so many moments that I was getting invested in and couldn't wait for them to go into more depth with it, but before that can happen, the next scene would usually play without giving the previous one its proper conclusion. This movie in a way is like playing a Mario game strictly for the story mode, and nothing more. While you do clear all the obstacles and eventually beat the game, you are missing a lot of secrets and cool details, so while you do end up finishing the story, you haven't really experienced everything 100%. And that's what this movie feels like. Now, it doesn't ruin the experience as a whole because it still has a great story, characters, and fan service, and there are a lot of elements that do get a proper conclusion and payoff, but there is definitely a lot of room for improvement, and maybe that can happen with a sequel in the future, but I will get more into that later. Let's move on to the movie's presentation. If there is one thing that is so charming about Mario is that he is a character that has been around for so long, four decades to be exact, so if you look at his media in chronological order in terms of visual quality, you will see a true evolution. Looking at his visuals from Donkey Kong all the way to Super Mario Odyssey, you can see how much the world surrounding the plumber has truly evolved. And if you look at the artwork by era, you can tell that Nintendo did a great job 
of making Mario visually appealing during that time period. Heck, in recent years, Nintendo games look like they can be visually stunning animated features, with the graphics looking on par with PS5 and Xbox Series X games. Not only that, but whenever a Nintendo game contained a cutscene, it looked cinematic, and it left me imagining how great an animated Nintendo movie would look on the big screen. And oh my goodness, Illumination absolutely hit it out of the park when it came to this film. I'm not joking when I say this is the best looking movie Illumination has ever made in recent memory. If you loved how incredible the promotional material for this movie looked, you will be blown away watching the final product in theaters. They manage to keep the cartoony style that Mario is known for, but they also add some extra details and textures to the characters that almost make them look like completely new designs that don't feel like they're trying to market a toy. I love the extra detail they put on Mario and Luigi's overalls, Princess Peach's dress, Donkey Kong's fur, Bowser's scales, and many more. The new locations they bring into the movie are also incredibly stunning to look at, and have so many little details to analyze, like the scene where Mario and Toad are heading into the Mushroom Kingdom town, and you can find so many references used in clever ways, such as a pet cheap cheap in a bag, the crazy cap store from Super Mario Odyssey, coin blocks being used as ATMs, clear pipes from Super Mario 3D World being used as a super fast traveling method, and so much more. All of these details really make this world feel alive, and a faithful remake of the franchise's origins at that. With all of that said, let's talk about the musical score for this movie. On one hand, I absolutely love the remix OSTs from Mario games in the past. I really appreciate the effort the composers made in order to make new versions of these songs that are not only nostalgic, but fit with the vibe of the movie as well. There are some original songs too, especially this one musical number in particular sung by Jack Black that you will probably laugh out loud when you hear it for yourself. However, there are also licensed songs in the movie as well, and they are very unnecessary for the scenes that they played in. I didn't hate them by any means, but they just felt cliched and generic, and I feel like this is the wrong type of movie to have them in. But overall, I really like the presentation in this movie. They bring the world from the games into cinema gracefully, there are a lot of details to discover and analyze, and the original songs are great to listen to. Even if I thought the licensed songs were unnecessary, I didn't mind them too much. Now it's time to talk about the voice performances. Now this is the part that probably had everyone on edge more than the plot itself. Ever since the casting was announced back in a Nintendo Direct in late 2021, the internet practically went nuts. Not only were there countless memes and arguments, but people assumed that the movie would fail as a whole, and for a while, I agreed with that assumption. I felt like most of these celebrity voice acting choices were just there to say, hey, we got a celebrity in the movie that everyone knows. And I could not wrap my head around most of them for a while, especially Chris Pratt as the lead role Mario, and not Charles Martinet the iconic voice actor for the character for about three decades now. Heck, I wondered why the people who voice the characters in the games didn't just voice those in the movie for the longest time. However, that was before the trailers came out. That is when I started to become more accepting of them. Well, most of them. If there is one problem I have with the trailers, is that I feel like they put Chris Pratt's worst voice clips in there. And that is what unfortunately caused him to get made fun of for the longest time. Despite how much of a joke it sounded like, I still loved Chris Pratt as an actor in general, but I just didn't think he would stick the landing on this role. However, when I finally saw Chris Pratt's performance in full action on the big screen, I surprisingly enjoyed it. No, it was not perfect, but I really like how he gave Mario an accent of an Italian who lives in Brooklyn, and I thought it was a pretty smart decision, especially when you think about the origins of the character. Yes, I would still pay to see Charles Martinet playing this role, 
but he does make a cameo in this movie too, and it's a very charming one at that. I would also like to say that I would have preferred if he had voiced Luigi as well, but Charlie Day does a fantastic job voicing the character, and you can tell he gives it his absolute all, especially in the scenes where Luigi shows his timid side. Let me tell you, if a Luigi's Mansion movie ever happens, I know Charlie is absolutely going to dominate his performance as the lead role. Keegan-Michael Key was absolutely hilarious with his Toad performance, giving him a vibe where he is this very energetic and hyper person who wants to be everyone's friend. And if I'm being honest, I would prefer if he voices Toad in the games from now on, because if he did, Toad would probably be one of my favorite characters in the franchise. The same could be said for Anya Taylor-Joy's performance as Princess Peach, as she adds such an amazing layer of strength to the character, while also adding Adding a soothing tone that reflects her personality in most of the games. Seth Rogen as Donkey Kong was also a surprisingly great performance, as he does a great job making the character sound cocky and dopey at the same time, making him almost feel like a stereotypical jock in high school. There are also some smaller roles that I want to give props to, such as Sebastian Maniscalco as Foreman Spike, Kevin Michael Richardson as Kamek, Carrie Payton as the Penguin King, Juliet Jelenic as Lumily, Scott Menville as the Blue Shell Koopa Paratroopa, and some more great performances from actors such as Jessica DeKiko, Reno Romano, John DiMaggio, and many more. If there is one performance that I would say is underwhelming, it would probably have to be Fred Armisen as Cranky Kong, as he sounds more middle-aged rather than a senior, it's not bad, but there is room for improvement on his end. With all of that said, the award for best voice performance has to go to Jack Black as Bowser. By watching the trailers, I predicted that this would probably be my favorite performance in the film, and I was so glad not to be proven wrong. Not sure if you know who I am, but I'm about to rule the world. Jack Black absolutely kills it when it comes to voicing the character, by making him sound threatening like Bowser was in the older days, and even giving him this sense of goofiness reflecting his funny moments from games like Super Mario Odyssey. Plus, he even has a musical number in the movie that is available to listen to on YouTube right now, but I'm not going to spoil it for anyone who has not seen the movie yet, because you will love it when you see it for yourself. Overall, the voice performance for the movie is surprisingly great. There were a lot of actors like Chris Pratt and Seth Rogen who did a surprisingly great job, and even if there was some room for improvement, I don't mind the current casting at all. I wonder what bizarre choices they will make in the sequel. Can we get Elon Musk as Wario, Christian Scal as Daisy, Patrick Warburton as Funky Kong, Ricky Berwick as Wall- In conclusion, the Super Mario Bros. movie nails a lot of areas, such as presentation, voice performances, and story, and it overall feels like justice to a franchise that probably should have gotten something like this a long time ago. However, the movie still has its too fast of a pacing, and this one factor alone does unfortunately make this movie worse than it deserves to be in my eyes. However, as I am writing this, the movie is absolutely destroying the box office, and there have been constant talks from the cast about a sequel. So if that does happen, I am hoping that it will have everything I enjoyed about this film, plus also giving us a chance to take it all in without it being thrown to us all at once. Overall, my final score for the Super Mario Bros. movie is a 7 out of 10, and a very low one at that. Now that doesn't mean I think this is a poor movie, because in fact I think this is a good movie, but there are some, but there are some bad flaws that do need some fixing. I would recommend you go see it in theaters, but looking at the box office right now, I'm assuming you already have. Would I go back and watch it a second time in theaters? Maybe one more time, but I feel like even that is pushing it. But hey, you do you. It's a very nice thing to start Cinemation with a good movie, but as for 2023, I highly doubt that this will be my favorite animated movie of 2023. But hey, we can't confirm that yet, can we? Well, let's look at the next movie for Cinemation.
Thank you so much for watching Cinemation. Like and subscribe if you want to see more animation content from Big Ant. Wahoo! And as always, keep calm and let life carry you on.